Welcome back, it is Thursday and that means acting analysis for animators and today I want to take another look at the TV show ER. That's right, it is time for another ER. I have about 50 of those. So it's time to bring them back. I wanna bring them back to maybe once a month. And there's always awesome stuff with Carter and this time also other people in the cast. So let's get right to it. So this one is Carter and you can see that. <laughs> It really cracked me up. So their prognosis is that she has tuberculosis. So he asks her, she finally says, hmm, yeah, I might have this. And look at Carter's reaction. He goes, wait, what, tuberculosis? And then look at him, how he slowly decides <laughs> to cover his mouth. It's not like he has to really hide it. He's a doctor, he can protect himself. But I love the pantomime aspect of him looking, that's that little head dart. And then how he slowly starts with the chart, looks around. So good. He does a lot of that stuff in the show. So there's a lot of pantomime and looking around and just gestures and just the looks that he has. It's awesome. And I love that because it's something that you could use, as I always say, when you have a character that does the lip sync, you can stick to that lip sync and do exactly what, you know, you're, you're bound to that timing and everything. But you could have a second character reacting to that. Maybe you don't even see the person that performs the audio. Maybe that person is in the background. Or we can kind of stage you like in this, where one character says something, we cut the other person reacting and then doing something with a prop, whatever it is, react acting to that situation or specifically to what that person said. Next one is with Dr. Weaver and she is one, she always has one of those crutches, that's the word? It's early in the morning, I'm already forgetting my English. But no, she, she always has to use one of those for balance or for walking and everything. And because you do this, if you had this, you'd be used to doing things with one hand. So if you have this and you can only use one arm, or one leg or whatever it is, you're used to using it in a different way. And in this scene, what I love is that she opens the door and she has the chart there with the paper and she can't use this hand, this hand, to flip the paper over. So what does she do? She does it like this. And it's something that just, in the scene, it's just normal because they're just talking. That's the actual focus of the scene is the content. But what I like is that detail. So if you have your character and they're used to doing something, again, they might have just one eye, one arm, one leg, or something else, or maybe they are used to, maybe they have functioning arms, but they're doing something where they have to hold something with both arms and they're used to doing that action. And then whatever they need to do, they can do this with their mouth grabbing something or whatever it is. But it shows that the character has done this a couple of times. There's history there. And it kind of shows that you did your research that, well, if this character is doing this or has this affliction or whatever it is, well, what would they do to compensate? And is that something that's part of their normal routine? And lastly, another one with Carter, but it's actually Benton, Dr. Benton reacting to Carter. So, so as we watch this, I already like this. He is happy about the job that she did. It's like, hey, that looks pretty good. And as always, if you wanna watch the whole thing, you can hear the audio and everything. I'm going to upload this separately. Link in the description to a clip that is unlisted. As always, copyright and all that good stuff. So that is separate, as always, for you to watch. But he tells her, good job. And I like this, that it's kind of like a visual representation of what he says. He's just excited. He's very happy. It's a cute little detail. And again, if you had audio, let's pretend, right? The audio of the person that says it up here, you might not want to or can't animates the lip sync and that's something else that would show how he feels. It's a simple thing with the hands. But anyway, he does that. She invites him for something else. He goes, yeah, why not? And then Benton comes in <laughs> and surprises Carter with that. Carter, as always in every season, has the fantastic moments. But what I love is this, his long reaction. <laughs> this is not, this is not it, but I love his. He, she has that look and I love Carter's double take, huh? Huh? But then it's that long look. And there are a couple of things about this here. Because he says Carter. He says Carter right here. Okay, Carter. And then come. And he has that little gesture. You're like, come on, come on, come on. But the cool thing is that A, you can drag out this moment of let's pretend you have your lip sync. And again, this is different because you have the ambient sound that stretches. So if you have lip sync and you have a couple of pieces of, you know, whatever sentences that you have. So it's kind of tricky when you insert silence. And then like this ambient sound, hissing or background stuff with people. And then there's complete silence. And then suddenly the audio continues. It's sometimes a bit jarring when you suddenly have to cut off and then the sound comes back. So if you could somehow sample ambient sound or you know room noise or whatever your ambient sound that you have in that scene, and you can fill those holes, that would be great. But sometimes it's just a bit too jarring when that, when it cuts in and out. But in this case, it is there. That's part of the scene. There is that long silence. 
But what I like is that you can do your own acting. And as I always say, and if you've been watching this, you must know that I'm, I'm very fond of this, is that when you have your lip sync and this is long pause, it's totally up to you to add acting in there. And you can do some more subtext, you can kind of change the situation, you can make it more serious, more comedic. And in this example, it's just a great moment of how is he going to react? And an opportunity for you to kind of show your acting chops. And in this case, it's that look. Again, no movement, it's just it's completely stunned. It's that little dart here. But I'd love this here. So he start, <laughs> he has that reaction, looks over, wants to say something, right? But he doesn't say it just yet. Then again, wants to say it again, but doesn't. And then he says Carter. So from a pantomime point of view, I love this because you can add all that stuff. But also from a lip sync point of view, what I tell my students is that, that you don't have to always stick to the shapes when the audio happens, right? So when someone's, like in his case, he says Carter. You don't have to do a default, back to default, close mouth and wait and then go Carter. He has that moment of Carter. And that could be applied to all kinds of things, right? So if someone, I think I made that example a while back, when someone is surprised, you don't have to wait and be in default mode and go, what? You can have that moment and have the character go, what? And you can start to form that shape, this long anticipation before you actually say it. And in this case, again, it's just something in terms of his reaction where he wants to say Carter, he goes like, I can't believe this is happening then. Okay, Carter, come. And it's just something that is a cool opportunity for you to, again, to add those, acting skills that are outside of the lip sync. That's something that you bring to it. The specific timing is up to you. The acting is up to you. That's not something that you have to do because that's the timing of the lip sync or that's the emotion in the lip sync. And that's it. But there is so much more. There are so many other pieces. It's gonna be more about obviously lip sync, audio pieces, pantomime, also prop usage, background stuff. I know it might seem like really ER, it's that old, but there's so much good stuff in there. So I'm gonna bring it back because it's so awesome. But for now, that is it and I will see you tomorrow for another FNA.